Hey everyone, my name is Riley and in this video I will show you how to set up an automated email sequence with ConvertKit. I will walk you through the entire process step by step and show you how to create sequenced emails, how you can add delays between emails and how you can use tags to split your emails into different sections and send different emails to different subscribers depending on the past actions that they have taken. The first thing that I need to mention is that you need to be on either the creator or the pro plan. If you are on the newsletter plan right here, this is only going to allow us to create one automation on the automation builder and we need much more than this. So usually I would say just stick with the free plan, but for this specifically, you do need to be on either the creator or the pro plan. With that being said, I will leave my affiliate link at the top of the description. And if you use that link, it's going to be this link right here. You can come over to ConvertKit and you can actually sign up to a 14 day free trial on either the creator or the pro plan. So once you have that set up and we are on either the creator or the pro plan, I am now inside of ConvertKit and we are ready to go ahead and start creating an automated email sequence. Now we have two steps when doing this. The first is a simple email sequence and then the second is more advanced where we can get more customization with this and make a more advanced and better sequence. So the first step is the basic and to do this we just go up to send right here and then we can go down to sequences. In the sequences section this is where we can create a simple step-by-step -step email sequence and we can write out our emails. So in sequences we can go in and click on new sequence right here and then we have two templates to choose from whether we choose this image template or this plain text template and then we can go in here and actually start writing out our emails. Let's say as an example that I am a fitness coach and this is why I am creating an email sequence to try and get more clients for my fitness coaching business. So in here I'm going to go into this first sequence I'm going to call this welcome sequence right here let's call this welcome sequence and now I can go through and start creating these emails. So right now I am creating the first email inside of this sequence so we can go to the subject line and I can say like welcome to your new life and then in here I want to go ahead and delete everything that is already in here and I can now go ahead and start typing out this email. So I could maybe say hey and then something very cool about ConvertKit is if we click slash right here it's going to bring us up all of these commands that we can go through. So if we want to add a heading to the email or if we want to add a bulleted list or a numbered list or buttons, images, anything like this, we can do that by opening up this slash command. So I could go in, for example, to personalization and we can personalize this email right here. So I can add the subscriber's first name. I can say, hey, first name, and then go down and start typing out the rest of this email. I'm just going to do this as an example. Once we have that email written, what we can then do is choose how long after somebody joins do we want to send this email. So I want to send this immediately. Somebody joins my list, we can send that out right there. So I now have this first email created and this is going to be sent immediately. And then once that is created, we can go over to this right hand side, click on add email, and we can now start writing the second email in the sequence. So this is going to be sent out immediately. Then we wait 24 hours or one day and we can send the second email. And then once again, we would go through, just delete what is currently in here. And then we can start typing out the second email, just like that. Then I can go through and add another email. I want to make sure this is set to two days because I want to be sending an email every day in this example. So we set this to two days. Once again, I go through, create the email. I think you get the idea now. I just want to go through and add some subject lines here. So the task task of getting fit and this one can be called like the road ahead. Okay. So we now have these three emails. You can go through and add as many emails into here as you like. And that is how we can create a basic email sequence. Once we have that created, we can go back and we can see we now have this welcome sequence created and you can create multiple different email sequences that you might want to use. So that is the basic aspect of this. And that's just how we create a step-by-step -step email sequence and we can choose how many days we want between them. Now, this is where we take this to the next level and we can start adding different tags and customization to this email sequence and really start building out something special. So to do this, we want to go up to automate right here and then go to visual automations. So we click into visual automations 
and then we can click on new automation in this top right corner. And as you can see right here, we are going to get some templates. So you can go through and we can look at some of these templates right here and we can get some inspiration potentially. So we can go through, check these out. And then if you actually do want to use any of these, we can use the template and that's going to allow us to use that template. But for now, as I'm showing you how to use this, let's create an empty automation and start this from scratch. So we can click on start from scratch right here. And then the first thing that we are going to do is click on start building. Now, immediately, this right here is going to ask us, when are we going to start this automation? Like what needs to happen for somebody to be added into this automation? So we have a few different options here. The first is if they join a form. So this is, let's say they sign up on a landing page that you are going to create. We can select that right there. The second is they are added to a tag. And it's going to be, it's going to confuse you if I explain this now, but I will come back to starting somebody from a tag when we actually talk about tags later. Then custom field, once again, I will talk about this later once we know what custom fields are. And purchase is pretty self-explanatory. When somebody makes a purchase, they would be added to this email sequence. So let's start with the most popular, which is join a form. We can then select a form that we have created. And now if I click on add event, Whenever somebody fills out the form that I have tagged right here, they are going to be added into this automation. And as you will see here, we have down and across. Now across is basically going to give us another starting point. So we will come back to this. But if we go down, this is going to be the next step. So once somebody is added, once they have filled out this form and been added to this automation, what is the next thing that we are going to do? So if we click in, we have three different options. We have event, we have action, and we have condition. Now I'm going to start this out with an action. And in here, let's just start this off by sending people to the email sequence that we just created. So the welcome sequence, we can click into this and search for the welcome sequence and add that right there. And now what this is saying so far is somebody fills up this form, they are entered into this automation, and then they are going to be sent out this welcome sequence. Then we can go down and staying in this action section, we can add a delay. So if we had two different sequences right here, let's say we had a welcome sequence. And then if I was to go back right here and we go back into the sequences to create another one, I could create another sequence right here and I could call this training sequence. And then I would go through, obviously create this sequence with all of these emails. And then once that is done, we can go back into the automation that we just created. And let's say that we want to add a delay between these. So we can add an action. We can add a delay right here. So delay for a number of days. And let's say that we want to give our list a five day break in between the welcome sequence. They then wait five days. And then we can go in, add another sequence right here. We are going to tag the training sequence. So that is pretty easy. And that is pretty straightforward, right? But the next section that we are going to talk about is where this really heats up and this gets interesting because what we can do is we can now add tags. So in this example, I'm just going to go back and delete this training sequence right here. And then, and I'll also delete this. And then what we can actually do is we can add a tag after this welcome sequence. So let's say in this sequence, we sent out a free guide, a free video that we wanted our subscribers to watch. Well, what we can do in here is we can add a tag and we can go to condition we can add a tag right here and we can basically filter down and figure out who has watched this video and who hasn't. And then we can split this automation into different paths for the people who have taken different actions. So I'm not sure if I explained that too well, I will just show you. What we could do is we could create a tag right here and we can say has watched video. And then we can add that in right there. And then as you can see, this is going to be split into yes and no. So people who have watched the video, we can go down here and we can send them a different sequence to the people that haven't watched this video. And then the way that we can actually figure out if they have watched this video or not is we can tag them in the actual email. So to show you what this would look like, I'm just going to go back and let's go back into the sequence that we created earlier. So welcome sequence. And let's say in the last email, this is where I sent out the video. So imagine this is just a standard email. And then at the bottom, we add a link to the video. So we can go in and we can say, watch the video here, right? And then we highlight this and we can add a link. And then we would enter the link to that video in right here. So we add the video link in. And then what we can do is right here, we can tag subscribers who click this link. So we click that right there. And then we can add the tag, has watched video. 
And then what this is going to do is anybody who clicks this link to watch the video, they are automatically going to be tagged with has watched the video and we can tell that they have watched this. So once we have that set up, if I just go back to this visual automation right here, we now have this tag set up so we can see who has watched the video and who hasn't watched the video. So then we would maybe go back to the sequences creator right here and create a new sequence. And then we could create one and say that this is training training bootcamp. And this is for people who have already watched the video and they are now more warmed up. I accidentally put that in the subject line. We add that up there. So we now have training bootcamp. And then we can create another sequence right here for people who haven't watched that video. And for the sequence title, nobody is going to be able to see this. So we could maybe call this sequence to get people to watch video, right? Then we can go back into visual automations right here and we can add these in here. So if they watch the video, then we can send them an email sequence and this is going to be training bootcamp. We can add that right there. And then if they haven't watched this video, then we can go in and send them to a different email sequence, which is going to be sequence to get people to watch video. So we now have a split path right here of different people who took different actions and are going to see a different email sequence depending on the actions that they took. So over here, we could say in the no path, we basically want to figure out, is this person actually interested or are they just taking up room on my email list? So on this side, we can basically go in and we can add another condition. And we want to figure out this time, did they actually go ahead and watch that video? So once again, we can go add tag and we can choose the same yes or no and go has watched video, add condition. So we've created a split path again. And then we can say if people didn't watch it the first time, but they have now watched it, that's fine. We just are once again going to send them over to this training bootcamp. However, if they still haven't watched the video, I guess we could really depend on how lenient we are going to be with this. Like if we wanted to be super strict, we could just go in here and we could just unsubscribe this person from the email list. We can add that right there and add. Or alternatively, instead of unsubscribing them, let's just go back in and delete this step right here. You might want to not immediately unsubscribe them. Although that is going to save you money on your plan if we just remove these people immediately. But if you value having more leads, even if they are inactive over the price you pay, then you could set it up this way. So we could go to no, and we could say here, we want to add a tag. And the tag that we want to add is inactive. Just like this. So create tag, just like that. This person is now going to be tagged as inactive. So let me just go through and show you how this funnel is going to look so far. So they fill in the form they get sent to the welcome sequence. And then we basically figure out, have they watched this video or not? If they have watched the video, they get sent to this training bootcamp. If they haven't, then we send them another set of emails to try and get them to watch this video. And if they do this time, then once again, we send them to the training bootcamp. So now anybody who has watched the video is sent to the same area, but if they still haven't watched the video, we tag them as inactive. So this is the way that I recommend setting this up, kind of map this out and then create the emails as we go. So now what do we want to do for people who have seen the training bootcamp? Well, we might want to sell them on something. So we can go back up to send and whoopsie, not into broadcasts, into sequences, add a sequence. And then in here, we can go in and we can title this sales sequence. And this is where we're actually going to try and sell and make money from this list. So we can go back to automate, visual automations, and go back in here. And then what we are now going to do is add this right here at the bottom. So we don't want to add it here because if we do, it's going to exclude these people. We want to add it where all of these are lined in. So we go here, add this email sequence, and we can add these people to the sell sequence and add that in. And then if we look at this, we can actually see that the people who still haven't watched this video are going to be sent to this, but they are not warmed up enough yet. So what I'm actually going to do is go to inactive right here. And if somebody is tagged as inactive, I want to also move the subscriber. So I'm just going to remove them. And then what we can do is we can either send them to another automation that we set up. So just to show you this, we can go back in, automate visual automations, and then create a new automation right here start from scratch. And then maybe we could call this inactive automation. And then we just do the same thing and set up an automation for people who are tagged as inactive. And then we can go back to the main one that we have and move them over to that automation. So move subscriber, and then we can either remove them entirely and just send them nowhere, or we can start another automation. So we can select that right there. Then we can choose the automation we want them to be added to. 
and they are now going to be moved over to inactive rather than getting this cell sequence. So this is exactly what I wanted to show you at the start. When I talk about right here, you wouldn't have really understood what I mean when we start something with attack. But now you will, because if we go back over to the inactive automation that we just created, the way that we are going to start this is with somebody who's just been tagged. So by default, they are actually already going to be added to this because we told the previous automation to add them into this. But if we hadn't done that, then what we can do is go here and is added to tag. And we can basically start this off and say anybody who's been added to inactive, they are going to be added to this automation right here. And in here, I will actually use this automation to show you how we can use some of these other tools. So the first thing is going to be over here on condition. We can basically split subscribers based on things like tags, on advanced filters, custom fields, or email opens. So let's say we want to split these subscribers based on email opens. This wouldn't really make sense right here, but just as an example, we can add some email sequences into here. So let's just add training sequence, just as an example. So we have the training sequence. We can then go down into condition and we can split the subscribers based on the amount of emails that they've opened. So we can say if the subscriber has opened any of the emails in the last seven days, they are now going to be split in these two categories. So if this person opened the email, then what we can do is we can say, hey, maybe this person isn't inactive anymore. So we go to have they opened an email? Yes. Then we go here and we can add or remove a tag. So we can go in and we can remove the tag inactive and they are no longer going to be tagged as inactive and then we can also go down and maybe we want to add a tag as well and for the tag we might want to now add an active tag so we can create that right there and now if this person opens an email they get removed from the tag inactive and they get added to this tag which is active and then maybe what we can do is we can go back to the other automation that we have created so in here we can go ahead and add these in so we can choose whereabouts on the automation we want to slot them in and maybe it's right here because we still want to get them to watch this video that they haven't yet watched so i can add them in right here we can click on add go to event and we can say jump to here when a tag is added so we can select this and then go to the active tag and now what this automation is saying, what we have between these two different automations is somebody goes through here, they are already tagged as inactive, but they go through and we realize that this person is actually active. So we de-tag them from inactive, we tag them to active, and then once they are tagged as active, they are automatically going to be dropped here and then they will go through the sequence just like all of the other active subscribers. So in the rest of the events, we've already talked about tag is added. We can do the same thing when a tag is removed. So we could actually just skip that whole process. I just wanted to show you how to do this. Whoopsie. And instead of going for the active tag right here, if we delete this, we can basically go up and say if somebody is actually removed as inactive, we want to drop them right here. So if they are removed as inactive, we can just drop that there. And that kind of takes away the need for us to add that active tab. We can also choose to add events when a product is purchased. So we could go into our automation and just drop this in right here. Once they have purchased a product, we choose what product this is going to be, and we can just add them in. We can also choose on a certain date. So if a date occurs, let's say we are having a launch, we could basically create like a launch sequence and then we could basically say when a date occurs, we want to add everybody into that launch sequence. So I'm just going through and seeing if there's anything else that we need to cover here, but we've basically covered everything that you need to know in order to create automations with ConvertKit. So that is how you can set up an automated email sequence inside of ConvertKit. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.